Okay, cool. Well, good evening, everyone. Um, so um, I know that it's it's a bit challenging for me to talk to you after dinner, but I I hope we'll still have some fun. We have three seats, perfect for you, ladies. Uh, please come in. Um, so I've been asked to talk a bit about the ideations. You probably had some uh, seminars, technical ones, and you are still going to have some. So today is going to be about everything but technical. Uh, and I hope it will be useful for you too. So my name is Michael. Uh, I am a lecturer at the New York College, so I teach uh, computer science and uh, generative AI and uh, complex systems. I also started, uh, built and sold one company and uh, uh, started actually another one. Uh, I'm a physicist by training, so I'm not a computer scientist, but uh, I'll be sharing with you what was really helpful for me and for my colleagues, both in academia, in industry, and in, uh, in some governmental projects even. And the cool thing is that the frameworks of ideation and creativity really, they're useful across all different disciplines. So whatever you will be building, I hope it will be useful. Um, but uh, let I wanted you really uh, to have some canvas uh, so if, if you can, please use paper. Those of you who are allergic to paper, you can use your uh, computers, but I'd like you to have like a white screen desk, something where you can just draw or type or better both. Uh, if you don't have any apps like this, the easiest way probably will be to use uh, the, um, something like in a Google spreadsheets uh, or Google Docs or anything like that. I think that tool, can you share? Because I think we're very short on paper. That's fine. So actually, oh, you have a perfect canvas, so I'll not give it to you. Uh, sure, sure, go on. Yeah, the most, uh, the most rare entity in, in the US is, uh, is paper, so it's really valued. Here you go. Ah, you, you do have, okay. Uh, so who else need a paper? Uh, oops, maybe, maybe you can help. Yes, yeah. yes, I'll do it. Thank you. So uh, why I would like you to use the paper and a pencil uh, is because when we think about the ideation, uh, when you think about the ideation, you think about it usually as a one-time thing. So in a hackathon, you will have to come with an idea in the beginning and then you will have to build it. And it's, really uh, a lot of us see the hackathon and in general the work, most of the work on the projects is the technical work when you have to kind of go deep and then grind it and grind it and grind it. Uh, but this is because uh, of the framework that we get from the school. When most of the school time we spend on analytical work when you have to really go and try to solve something that is preset for you. Uh, but in the real world it's very often quite an opposite asking the question, uh, the right question, very often is the key for the successful project and vice versa. Uh, if you look at the statistics, more than uh, three quarters of the startups of the companies, they're dying because they are pursuing the problems and the questions that actually nobody needs, right? So they're asking, they're working very hard on things that if they would ask around, if they would probably put a bit more effort into ideation, uh, they would not be building. The same with the government projects, the same with academic research, et cetera. So this kind of thing is not just fascinating, but it's also very useful because it's one of the very critical things. Um, but at the same time, sometimes it's difficult for us because we're, again, we're trained and it's a different paradigm. So what I'll try to do today is to push you a bit to be a bit more brave, to do something that you are not so used to do, but I hope you will like it. And I'll start with a question. How many of you are coders or consider yourself as coders? Or at least to write a code once a week. Any of you? Don't be shy. I mean, it's, uh, it's an anon anonymous. Okay, so probably about a half. How many of you never did write a, a line of code in your life? Okay, we don't have such people. Fantastic. But how many of you don't really like coding or don't consider it as a, as a, as a main skill? Only one person. Okay, interesting. So the rest of you who are not coders, don't hate it, and uh, at the same time, don't consider yourself not coders. I don't know how you define yourself, but it's good. So we are open for all kinds of uh, definitions. But um, let me ask you another question. How many of you think about yourself as a creative person? Creative people? 
We don't have any creative people here. Well, where, well, where did you come here then? Okay, we just just a few. Okay, you don't have to wear a, a rainbow flag, but it's just like um, you have some creativity in yourself. Let's put it this way. Anyone? So the rest of you, you say you don't think you're creative at all. Well, we'll I'll try. I'll try to change it. But you see, the thing is that uh, very often, unfortunately, the, the gold, the, the older we get, the more people to this question will answer no. So usually, when uh, when you have an audience of uh, people that are past thirty, then most of the most of the group will not consider themselves creative people or having actually any creativity inside of them, which is very sad because. Uh, very often it comes from the fact that for a very long time since childhood we are not doing anything artistic but artistic processes or and creative ones are very different right so the fact that you are not playing a violin or you are not drawing anything on a daily basis doesn't mean that you are not creative creativity which is very tightly linked to innovation and everything that is about the new solutions and actually just looking for problems and coming up with new solutions. This is what most of us are finding exciting in life. And if you, look, if you look into neurobiological research, then you will find that most of the endorphins, most of the fun and happiness that we, our brain, uh, experience is coming from the creative moments in our lives. When you have this aha moment, when you understand a new idea or create something that no one has built before. Okay, so to prove you that you are a bit creative, what I'll ask you to do is now, I'll give you a 15 second, and you will have to uh, look right or look left. So for those of you who are in this row, you'll have to look right. For those of you on that row, just look left. And you will have 15 seconds to draw your neighbor on your, uh, on your paper or on your computer. So, and the time is, you ready? So three, two, one, let's go. Just you have 15 seconds, so no pressure. So don't worry. Go on, go on, go on, go on, go on. You will have the hackathon is going only just for one. You will have 24 hours for it. So you have only three. Okay, I'll give you 10 extra seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Stop. Okay, so you see, the thing is that very often it doesn't have to be perfect. So now exchange this, give it to you, or at least show it when you, if you are doing it on your iPad to your partner. So let me ask you, uh, what, what, what do you feel? What do you think about this? Fox, what do you think about it? What did you feel right now? Anyone? What did you feel now? What do you feel? What, what was your emotion? Yeah, just in general about this exercise and your drawing is drawing probably. Sadness, okay. Any anything else? What did you feel? Okay, interesting. That's a very a complex uh, mix of feelings. What about you? Not much. Not surprised, okay. Well, you see, the thing is that uh, what, what is very important here is that the sadness probably also come from the fact that you were not able to express the concept very clearly. Uh, as you can see, this is a very, uh, very counterintuitive, probably uh, an exercise for the uh, technical workshop. But the thing is that uh, we very often do it during the ideation, and you will be doing it a lot during the hackathon. And in general, this is a very useful thing when you can take a, a concept and then abstract it. Find really some important features that characterize something, a problem, a system, uh, your users, your model, whatever you are building, the solution, the programming statement, etc. okay? Because if you will be raising money, if you will be hiring people, if you will be trying to express why something that you've built is really important, you will not have six hours to explain and go in all nitty gritty details. You have to capture the most essential, interesting, insightful things in order to excite people. So we'll be doing some of these kind of things, which some of you find sad now, but I hope uh, you will find it a bit more interesting further. And the thing is that this doodling and really creating uh, a different, uh, different expressions through the words and through the, some visual objects 
that's basically all you need. The thing is that although we very often we still feel restricted that we are not very good at drawing something and uh, painting, that's why we don't do these visual expressions, but this is just as good as writing a code or putting it in words, because as you know, uh, the words are also not always uh, precisely telling you what you, th what you think or what you feel. And specifically, that's why we have so many different languages, also programming languages, because some, some of them have strengths and weaknesses. So remember that you have quite, a, quite, a, uh, quite an arsenal. So there are very few things that I would like you to remember about ideation. And the very important thing here is that ideation doesn't really stop when you come up with an idea in the beginning of your hackathon. The ideation is something that you will have the whole 24 hours, because in the beginning you will have to choose the problem that you will be working on, but then every time you will be coming with a new step, with a new uh, part of your solution, you will be evaluating it and re-evaluating it, the ideation will still go. So this will, I hope, will be useful for you during the whole thing, and not just for the hackathon. So a few components for ideation are really um, about building the creative confidence. The fact that you and your creativity and your ability to build a solution, to find it, is as good as anyone else. Actually, we all can do that. And the fact that you can be creative and can find these new things that no one has built before, this is very important. And well, I hope that you will have a bit more confidence after today. Another thing is that real problems, one of which you will be spending the whole day of your life on, are only coming from people, only coming from your head. And this is what I mentioned in the beginning. This, uh, again, most of the companies are closing because they are not solving the real problems of real people, but they are solving their own problems or the problems that they just come up with because they have already a nice solution for them. So talking to people just around you, on the left and right, reaching out to those people who you, who you want to help is extremely important. Another one is experiential learning. There is no, uh, there is no use really of me giving you a two hour lecture on that. We will have to try it. And only through this iteration of trying, we'll be able to, to get some good ideas. Good ideas never come from within your head. You have to do some uh, talking, some drawing, some trying, prototyping, testing, and uh, basically this experiential learning. Final thing is that innovation is not really event. It never happens that uh, someone in a dark room alone thinks very hard and then comes up with a fantastic idea. No, it's actually a process. So it's, it, this is a process which has this certain mechanism behind it. When you come, you test, you try to talk to people, you, uh, you empathize, you prototype, et cetera, et cetera. And we will be actually working on this process today alone. So it's not static. You have to be creative and you have to talk to people. And these things uh, basically are important, as I said, in the very beginning of your ideation, but also throughout the process. But let's start first with the idea that you will probably will have to start with. Uh, I will not be giving you a bunch of ideas, but I'll give you some uh, guidelines that I find helpful for myself. And basically, I'll quickly go through four different things. In, uh, through some common mistakes that uh, I have done and some of the people uh, have done before in the hackathons, again, in academia, industry, and the government, how you can try to evaluate ideas. This is uh, to no extent extensively, but I hope at least some of these questions you will find useful, how you can filter for ideas and how you can generate them. And after that, we'll take a look at how you can then work with this idea service. So common mistakes, uh, again, of course, there are more than these three, but these three are the most common ones, probably. The first one is uh, very often people think that they need an amazing idea for the project, and then they will be stuck uh, because amazing idea doesn't come to mind. It doesn't come to mind in a minute, in five minutes, in 10 minutes, and you start panicking and really worrying that you're the stupidest person in the world. I mean, I've been through that many, many times. Probably I'm not alone, although you might be different, but don't be, don't uh, fall for this mistake, okay? Uh, another extreme of this mistake is really that uh, you don't have to worry about it at all. You just take the first idea that comes to your mind and then you work with it. Try to find a balance. How to find this balance, we will talk today a bit more, but look out for these ideas. Once you feel stuck, look up. Maybe you're already a hostage of one of those two. And finally, and this is something that I also mentioned already to you, is start with a solution instead of a problem. 
you're saying you, you know this cool machine learning algorithm or the sorting algorithm or whatever algorithm that you like and you're walking around with this algorithm looking at where you can plug it so that everyone will be uh, happy, will love you, and you'll have a lot of money. So it almost never works, really. So again, you have to find a problem first and then build a solution for it. Unless you are a researcher who doesn't care really about helping anyone, but probably there are no people here like this anyway. How to evaluate ideas. So once you have a bunch of them already, then what you can try to look at is the size of it, right? You don't want it to be too big and too small. Uh, how fit are you for it? Because there are some fantastic ideas, but what is very important is how well you can actually execute it. And are you genuinely interested in that? Okay, so how motivated you are. After four, year, after four hours, five hours, 10 hours, if we're talking about a hackathon or if we're talking about your uh, potential business or your academic project, four months in, you don't want to find yourself completely unmotivated uh, on something that you already dedicated some time of your life, got some investment, etc. Filters that can help you uh, are, of course, also not limited to this, but they are usually good enough. Uh, and for Hackathon, this is probably one of the most critical ones. The idea, uh, the problem, and the solution should not be too hard to start with. If you need eight hours of preparation work just to set up everything, it's probably not a very good fit for that particular event. Uh, if the space is boring for you and for others, it will be a bit difficult also to, in this competitive space. So remember about the environment in which you are. Too ambitious is another extreme. If, if you need like a week in order to build a prototype, you don't want to go there. And also look for existing solutions. If there, are, if there are a few existing solutions there, not too many, but at least a few, it's usually a good thing because you can have some reference points. Finally, uh, how to generate ideas. We'll also go a bit deeper into that. But these are a few things that help you, may help you, if you will be feeling stuck. So what you're good at, because you probably already know uh, a thing of you as to which you're good at. Uh, if you really passionately want something to be built already by someone, uh, if you would be excited to work on it for the next semester, for the next year, for the next 10 years. That's usually also a good thing because the motivation is very important. And look for things that will be, that have changed recently and something that is broken, something that, uh, for example, is very, very old school and has been changed for a very long time. Again, but this is, uh, this is the framework for the very beginning. But now, as I mentioned, this is a process that will probably, the ideation process, something that will be coming back again and again. And in order to actually go through these steps, there are a few very useful uh, elements in this process. And they go like this. You start with empathy, and then you define the problem, then you ideate, prototype, and test. What it really means is that uh, during this process, you will be focusing and flaring. You will be talking to others and then building something. You will be testing the ideas and then you will be, uh, and, and, and then you will be correcting them uh, further and further. Uh, so enough talking. That's probably already too much of me talking. Let's try to, uh, let's try to see on how the ideation work and how you feel about it actually. So what I'd like you to do is now to quickly, I'll be giving you 15 seconds again. And I'll be asking you to draw things that you will see now on the, uh, on the screen. So we'll start with the baby and the time go now. Okay. So we'll do some drawing, not too much. So don't worry. It's not just a drawing class, but I'd like you, I'd like you to start thinking conceptually on how you can see things and then communicate them. Okay. That's all for a baby. Let's now uh, draw a door. Okay, so let's do a house. Okay, and the last one, innovation. Cool. 
Well, how many of you did draw a baby with a bit of a curly hair? Uh, anyone did that? Okay. Oh, a few of you. Interesting. Have you ever seen a baby with a curly, like one curly hair on top of it? No, but you have this conceptual map, right? Right. How many of you did draw a, a light bulb for innovation? Okay. So, the, is it because you you know the only innovation that you know is about the light bulb? No, right? So, wh why this mapping then? Because you know that certain concepts could be expressed in such a way that people will immediately have the same concept map in their head. And this is a lot about creativity. It's because you don't map perfectly what you see, but you understand the concepts, right? And a lot of this uh, you will need for ideation because very often when you will be now trying to understand the problem, the people who you will be building for will not be able to tell you what their problem is. You will have to understand what they mean behind whatever they are telling you. And what I mean by that, you will find just in a minute. But uh, for the next exercises, what I'd like you to do is uh, we will be working in pairs. Uh, ideally, if this is not the pairs that you will be working in a hackathon, because uh, this, I, uh, you, we will be probably more productive. But if you're already sitting in such a way, it's fine. So do we have even people on every row? So this is. If someone is isolated and doesn't have a pair, so just like look left, right, and uh, figure out who will be your partner for uh, for this ideation exercises. So you folks are fine. Here we have five people. So uh, let me. Uh, we wish we will find a partner for you. Or do you have someone here with whom you would like to work? No. Ah, just one person. Okay, so if you want, uh, you can we, we, we can do it. Uh, we, you can do it with me. So uh, so you have someone, or if you feel too intimidated, you can join someone. So whatever works for you. Okay, cool. Um, and now in this pass, some of the things that we will be doing, some of this ideation, uh, you will be doing in pass, but some of them you will be doing on your own. And I will be telling you uh, on which stage uh, we are. So what we will, one of the exercises, uh, one of the narratives uh, that we will be using today is about uh, we will be building a transportation mobile app, okay, for today. And we will basically look at the ideation for that. So everything that I told you in the very beginning about the coming up with ideas, etc., we will skip for now. I am already giving you the problem, and the problem is a transportation mobile app. But for your hackathon, you will have to do everything in the beginning. The process, though, will be very similar to what we will be doing now. So just for the sake of time, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm combining it. So the first thing that I'd like you to do is to remember that we have all these five steps. But we will start with uh, uh, just before the empathy. And the first thing that I would like you to do is to uh, build a right now to write uh, on your paper, or if you are with the computer or the, or the planchette, just I'll give you three minutes to design a perfect transportation mobile app. You can draw some things out. You can write some things out. Think about the perfect transportation app, and you have four minutes for that. And the time goes now. If you have any questions, uh, just raise your hand. But don't worry about the details. Time, scope. And this is an individual, this is an individual exercise. So this one, you don't do in pairs. You do it on your own, okay? Fox? Fox, Fox. So this is an individual one. Right now, everyone is just doing by themselves. But later, we will, we will be doing it, uh, we will continue in pairs. But for now, try to think about your own perception, about your own concept of a perfect transportation mobile app. Okay. So you will be, uh, you are writing. Okay, fantastic. Uh, the thing is, the problem is that I will not be giving you much of my material for the feedback, but I will be helping you with my feedback. Okay, so it's a bit one-sided, but it's not because I don't care about your opinions, because I will not have time to do everything. Okay.
Okay, so we have one more minute to go. Okay, cool. So um, the time is up. And the thing is that right now, I would like you to keep this uh, design, whatever you built, drawn, written right now, as a reference point. And we will, you will look at it, I would like you to look at it in the very end to see how much uh, this idea evolved really from this. And the thing is that what we did right now is a bit, uh, um, is a bit dangerous really because I didn't give you any, any details, right? I didn't give you the details for whom you are building the perfect transportation app, uh, what you are using, what are, what are the constraints, et cetera. And all these things are actually extremely important because I'm basically pushing you to do the mistake which I just mentioned myself, right? Uh, to come up with a, a build a solution and don't care about the problem that much. So what we'll have to do now is to try to do the same thing but in a much in a bit more rigorous kind of systematic way, and we'll try to use this uh, the, the, the system of uh, ideation, which, uh, as I mentioned, consists of these five things. We'll start with the empathy. We'll try to empathize. What is empathy really? Uh, is uh, ability to emotionally connect to your users. It's to try to understand who you are, whose problem you are actually solving, right? So what do these people feel, what they see, what they experience, what are their problems, and what, what they really would like to get. So basically, you are trying to step in, in someone else's shoes, right? Because we are building, everything we are building is built for someone. So essentially, it's putting yourself in someone else's position. And how to empathize, we all have different uh, ways to do that, but there are a few things that help me and I wanted to share them with you. Uh, one thing that I try to remind myself is it's very important not to judge. So whenever someone is telling you about their problems, feelings or perception of the world, you don't have to correct them, right? You have to say that, oh, this is a very wrong way of look at things. And you try to Take it as a data. You're basically just collecting the data about the world from someone else's point of view. Uh, you also trying to do it from the as a beginner. Okay, don't use the experience at this stage. Don't take all your other data points with you. Just collect it from the raw zero stage. Take it with curiosity. This might be difficult sometimes, but this is why it's very important to work on something that you care about. Okay because this is where it's very important. Uh, some things in ideation, in this process of building solutions, in hackathons and later in life, you can't fake it. So if you really can't empathize people who you are helping, for whom you're building a solution, then it's going to be, uh, it's going to have some significant flaws. And for that, you have to be genuinely interested in helping them and curious about the problems. Uh, you have to do it also optimistically because you uh, should not be uh, seeing this problem as something that's going to destroy the world, but rather something that challenges you, that you can solve, right? This is an opportunity for you. Every problem, I mean, this is a cheesy phrase to say, but uh, some people say that the problems are also opportunities. So this kind of a bit cheesy point of view is sometimes useful, really, right? Because you have some tools 
So can you use these tools in order to push these problems a bit further? And finally, respect of you, of course, right? Because without the respect, again, your users will immediately feel it. And no one is going to, uh, to use it. So this is very important things uh, that work for, uh, for me. So the next stage, now we are going to do this in pairs with these partners that you have. So what I want you to do is to conduct a quick interview, again, about this perfect transportation app. So now you will be not designing a perfect transportation uh, app in a vacuum, but instead you will be doing it for your partner, for your uh, person who is sitting next to you. So you will have three minutes to interview uh, him or her, and what I want you to do is to ask to introduce uh, themselves and then ask about the transportation apps that they are using and how the perfect one will look for them, okay? So just these few things. You have three minutes and then uh, take some notes. So try to uh, look out for interesting things, for insights. And then I will uh, let you know when the time is up and uh, we'll have to switch the roles, okay? So three minutes uh, and the time goes now. Okay, let's go. So I will be asking, uh, I'll be asking you, or no, actually, let's do it the, the opposite way. So you can ask me, and then uh, because I will not have time to draw the the perfect. Thing. Okay, let's go. Yeah. So uh, I am I am an entrepreneur and also a researcher. I work at university. Uh, and I run a company, I travel a lot, uh, I like cities, cities, yes, yeah. so I use transport quite a lot, uh, that's probably all I can tell you about myself right so far, that's, pro that's probably all I can tell you about myself so far. Okay. All right, so do you use any Yes, so I use Google Maps. I use uh, mytransport.sg, uh, and uh, I use some Uber-like, so Grab, Gojek, these kind of things, uh, and, and US bus sometimes. Why do you use those transportation services? Uh, in order to get the optimal uh, transport options, uh, to find the optimal transport option, to find out the time of the next uh, bus in order to uh, hire a cab. So, and find the optimal route from point A to point B. I would really like a, a transportation app probably to be combined in, in one place. Uh, I am pretty happy with each of them, but the fact that they are uh, desynchronized is a bit inconvenient. Just give me a second, I'll check the time. Okay. Okay, go on. Still have a minute. Yes. I, th I think it will be, I think that probably is the perfect one for me. I can't really come up with uh, one that is just already is better than, say, Google Maps. Or, yeah. yeah. That would be good. Yeah, if I could call them, that would be that would be good. But Google Maps doesn't have uh, any US buses, and it, actually, the timing uh, of the next bus is not very good. It's a bit off. So you've experienced like uh, regular timing on Google Maps, or those like uh, yes, aerodynamic. Yeah. Okay, so uh, folks, three minutes are out. So now let's switch the roles. Now you you have to another person have to ask the same questions, and let's go again. Three minutes. So um, let me actually, uh, I'll try to do the same thing with you. And uh, I hope it will it will work out. So uh, what's your name and what you can tell me about yourself? My name is Rene. Okay. Nice to meet you, Rene. 
Jesus. Okay. Uh, do you use any transportation apps? The main transportation that I use is the Google Maps and the SGBus. Okay. Um, for the main reason is because I like to do my things just in time. I like my sleep. I like to stay at home as long as possible. And I only, I'm only willing to travel, get out of my house when I know that bus is coming to me in five minutes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> For me myself, I like to optimize my route so I don't have to spend too much time in traveling. So that's why I use the bus and the Google Maps. Uh, okay, so um, do you? Uh, do you do do you use any uh, apps for the uh, for the taxis? Rarely, because I think taxi is quite a waste of money. Because taxi are really expensive mm. compared to the um, private transport right now. Driving at one dollar, um, driving a taxi is around like ten times. Mm. So, um, driving a taxi is a rare thing. Yeah, unless I'm late for work or late for my work. Do you travel? Um, travel within Singapore. Or no, outside of Singapore. Um, I'll say it's relatively cheaper, like for example, let's say Malaysia and Vietnam, mm. I'll definitely be using those on um, there, with there. But do you install them there, or you have them installed and you will just use them there mainly? Um, probably I'll install it here in Singapore and mm. use Singapore currency to nice. convert it there. Did you ever try the apps that are not Singaporean apps that don't exist here but exist there? I guess I tried the one in Malaysia because there was one I was like stranded in Malaysia and the grad, there wasn't any grab car around it. So I uh, approached a local and she introduced me to some Malaysian app and then we got it immediately in like the beginning of the I see, okay, cool. So how the perfect one will look for you and how do you how do you see it? Um, maybe after the questions that you asked me, I'd like to have a centralized one, mm -hmm. uh, the one that's popular and used um, in all countries. Right now, it's the Grab, but um, I guess in different countries, there are cheaper options. Mm -hmm. For example, there are home taxis. So um, maybe we can have something like Grab that's more, uh, how do I say that, catered to local use, mm -hmm. um, more personalized to local preferences, so that uh, we can maybe like select the destination that we are going in. Uh, perhaps you can mm -hmm. I see. Okay. Uh, well, we'll talk about it just in a second now. But thank you, Renee. Okay, folks. Three minutes are out. So uh, I hope it was. Uh, did you did you learn anything interesting? Any interesting stories? Anyone? Any any insights? No, nothing interesting. Really, everything was just as expected, right? So every every. All your neighbors are boring. Well, uh, I hope it's fine for you, but uh, maybe there's still something interesting. But what I want you to do now is, uh, I hope we'll not push you too much, but I would like you to have now the second round of interviews. And why I want you to do that? Because you probably have seen the, the questions that I asked you to ask your partner were very factual, right? What are you using? What do you like? What do you don't like? How it looks, how the, the perfect app looks like? Uh, how do you identify yourself when you're talking about you? What, you? what I want you to do now is to go a bit deeper, right? Not these factual small snapshots, but I would like you to understand what is behind this use, right? Um, so ask about why a person is using something. Uh, this is a perfect question, baby question, why? which we know that usually if I uh, ask five times, the uh, person starts crying. So like, uh, why do you use this app? Because I'm afraid of Google collecting the data. Why are you afraid of Google collecting the data? Well, because my parents always collected my data. Why do they always collect? Well, because they always, they all protect me and try to control me, etc. So I don't want you to cry, but try to go a bit deeper and understand why certain things are important, why certain things are used, not used, liked or disliked. So try to understand what people probably don't even understand about themselves, right? So why a certain thing is perfect? Why there is an aspiration now, okay? So try to get the in, uh, insights from there. Ask uh, this why things and try in general to understand what's the role of transportation and the app uh, in this particular person, okay? Try to go deeper and find those insights. So we'll have uh, four minutes. But this is for both sides. So two minutes, one side, two minutes, another side. Okay. I'll tell you once the two minutes are gone and we start now. So Renee, let me come get back to you. So um, 
why I actually wanted to ask you why you are using like, like how much are you uh, walking? Walking, yes. I like walking. Mm -hmm. So um, normally, maybe like with um, from, maybe like from traveling from point A to B, I usually walk around like five to ten minutes, mm -hmm. depending on the nearest bus stop. But I do not mind going the extra mile, like ten minutes more. Okay. Because I think that walking is generous for myself and my health. Maybe you can take some stress off me and it doesn't. Uh, do you take any, uh, do, you, do you cycle? Um, not so often because I always fall down when I cycle. I see. So I you, I, I mean, I, you are a sports woman, so I would expect you to take some uh, sports. Do you do like a long board or anything like that? Sorry? Oh, do you, yeah, I, oh you do. So much because I think as I age, I'm, I just have more fears. I'm scared of like falling down, getting injured. I see. Okay. So safety is important for you. In transfer, okay, interesting. So do you uh do you check uh like is safety something that you look out also for in transportation when we are talking about the different transportation options, Singapore and abroad? Probably in Singapore not so much, but in general, is it something like it's on your radar? Mm -hmm. I remember someone telling me that if you're going overseas, wherever the grab is like um book your taxi on the app, like where a normal train because they track your location, right? Mm -hmm. So in the event if you go this day, you have your receipt. The receipt of where they are picking you up, who is picking you up, and all those uh information that they can help you with help you with and I don't know, someone can notice you more easily, so you can take that or you encounter something dangerous. Mm -hmm. So this is something that I definitely look out for. And when I'm overseas, I don't take um, taxis. I don't go to the taxis uh, along the road. So instead, I will definitely go for Grab and all those like travel bus and mm -hmm. to try on higher end to keep my booking. Okay. Uh, so how do you currently how do you currently envision in a perfect app this security might be represented? Oh, just give me a second. Sorry. Okay, now let's switch the roles. Fox, switching the roles. The question that you travel a lot, right? Yeah. Do you have any countries that stood out to you in terms of transportation? And what do you want? I like Singapore quite a lot, actually. Uh, one thing that uh, I like about Singapore is that there is a variety of it, and it's pretty efficient and on all levels. Um, one thing that I like in some European cities is a car sharing, which we don't, we have it here, but we don't have it uh, such a good thing. It's actually an interesting question. So I would like to have car sharing as an option in, uh, in my perfect transportation app, which we don't have. Well, because sometimes you uh, want to go somewhere where the, there is no public transport and where it might be difficult to hire a cab. So, for example, you want to go uh, to Sungibulo early in the morning. Uh, all the taxis are booked for people who are going for work. Uh, and Sungibulo is far from where I live. So the perfect thing will be probably to the... Uh, yeah, to, 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 get a, to, to get a car for a couple of hours and drop it there and then come back. So for car sharing, um, in your ideal, ideal situation, where do you expect to pick up the car? Well, these are the places. So uh, I know that mainly they are within the city, but for me, the main use will be some remote places where I'll go, right? So the parks, national parks, some few points, uh, that would be the places, so picnic places, so East Coast Park, Sungibolo, uh, etc. So those uh, remote places are where you expect to pick up the yeah. car. So um, what if in a situation where you have the car nearby your house, would you stand on the road? Would you, would you think? Oh, I would, I would, yeah, I would, I would definitely use it also. So uh, it's a mix, it's a tricky thing, but this is a, this is an important feature. Thank you, Rena. Let's go. Okay, so uh, the time is up. Uh, I hope that it was 
a bit more insightful. So you did get some of the things which you didn't get from the first interview. Uh, does anyone want to share a couple of insights? Anyone, anything interesting? Something that you didn't think about the, uh, some of the features maybe of the transportation app that you didn't think in during the first interview? Anyone? No? No one, nothing interesting really. Yeah. Book everything, okay, interesting. That's a cool button. Anyone else? Thank you. Uh, I think, did anyone talk about the security on transport as a feature that has to be in the transport? Anyone? No one, really. Who thinks that it, uh, security in transportation is important in general? In general, just uh, as, as one of the parameters in, in transport. Okay, a few people think. So maybe this is one of the things that you actually try to get these kind of things, right? How you feel. So remember that certain things, especially about the feelings, people are not immediately are going to tell you unless you ask them the questions, like why do you do that? How are you feeling? So try to go deeper because actually the feelings are very important. Uh, if you think about your own perception and use of the apps, the fact on how you feel when you use them and when they provide you a solution is what cap captivates you. If you feel comfortable, if you feel hip, if you feel effective, then this is extremely important. If you feel lame, if you feel like an old person who has to use a WhatsApp instead of Telegram, then this is bad, right? So this is about a feeling. Very often it's not about functionality. So that's why when you conduct interviews, when you're trying to find this idea to work on, the feelings of someone else, who, who am, whoever you are building this solution, extremely important. So dive into them during the, your interviews. So we, we try now to empathize. And uh, the next thing that I wanted you to do is now we will be looking at the definitions, right? So define is this next step, define a solution. So we'll try to define a problem and then try to find define a solution. But in order to uh, start it, uh, take a look at this picture. So uh, there's mainly me here, but I hope you still see the picture, and that's it. And I would like you to ask you, what do you think? So the, I hope you see that there is a girl and some books. Uh, so what do you think she needs? Right? So let's think about the solution. So what does she need? Anyone? Come again? A ladder. A ladder. Okay. Anything else? Come again? Shoes. Okay. Well, she's uh, at least socks, right? Also there. I think it's shoes. Ah, so that she is taller. Okay, okay, cool. Anything else? She needs a book. Okay. Which is good, right? So that you're thinking about the final element. Well, you can even say she needs wisdom then probably. Right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, anything else? What does she need? To grab a book. Okay, so we have one verb. Anything else? Longer <laughs> arms. You know, you try this mental mental image of this girl in the toilet, <laughs> high shoes with the long arms. And it's, uh, no, it's, uh, anything else? Let's brainstorm, we're, right? So we're just now doing some ideation. What else does she need? So this is a problem already, right away. You were, you're creating a solution, so we're brainstorming. Shorter bulk shelf, shelf uh, that's a good idea. Higher chair, okay. The glossary of the book, okay, that's very good, the index. Yeah. E-books, e thank you. The internet, right? Yeah, sure, because so she doesn't have to go. Well, it's some very good ideas, and you can see you start going more and more radical, right? You're looking at the sum of the things, the final solution, what is it, some of the steps in between, etc. But notice something also interesting. When you are, when I ask you what does she need, you are talking in terms of the nouns, right? So you are straight away giving me, except for the uh, one verb that we have, mainly nouns is something that she needs the factual thing. Now, this is good because you can immediately uh, have a vision of it, right? So you can immediately conceptualize the solution and start working in it. But at the same time, what is very useful often is not to restrict yourself at the first layer uh, layer of ideation with nouns. We're trying to think about the verbs, right? What does she need? She needs to, let's try to think about a few verbs. She needs to, come again? <laughs> Grow, okay, no, 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 that's serious, that's a good one. 
reach the bookshelf, right? Again, so now here the leather, the shoes, there will be all the different means, but this is actually will be the fact that will be also resolving the solution. Anything else? She needs to read the, the contents of the book, right? So if she, if she can find an internet, internet will be actually one of the things in order to solve the, the problem of reading book, etc. So you can see how the, although the nouns are useful, actually the verbs very often are more insightful because once you have the problem in terms of the verb, then you can see that a lot of different nouns could be solving this problem, right? And in order to visualize it here, interestingly, we have Henry Ford quote, because I wanted to give you this Henry Ford uh, quote, which was the favorite one of, um, what's his name, uh, uh, Steve Jobs. Uh, if you had, uh, if uh, I've asked people what they wanted, they would have said faster horses, right? So, and that's why he didn't do that. But if he would ask them about the verb, what they would tell him? move faster, right? They wanted, all they wanted is to come from one place to another faster. But people can't visualize the solution very often. Why? Because they are uh, very much taken into their processes and their daily lives. And it's your work as innovations and as innovators, as hackers, to come up with a solution for their problems. But first, try to formulate their problems. So if you use not nouns like horses, but the verbs like moving faster from point A to point B, then horses will be a good solution, but so there will be the cars or the, the, the rocket, right? Or the teleportation, whatever works at this particular moment in history of civilization, but it actually is still about the same thing. We still want just to move from point A to point B faster, okay? So now having this uh, in mind, let's try to think about and collect some of the insights, right? So we. We now did some interviews, so now let's try to collect the insights. And the insights are the why responses to the need, right, that you just collected. Uh, you need your expertise very often in order to dig them. Because you can ask this question why, which is very open, but at the same time, you have some expertise. You have some uh, strengths and weaknesses. You probably know some fields a bit better, but some of them you are a bit more passionate. So use this in order to go deeper in the, this interview with another person uh, and uh, get a bit more of an insights. Try to think after uh, about the actionable direction to go in. Not the final point, right? Not this noun as a solution, as the final solution at this point, but just the direction. And what I would like you to do now at this step is to design a useful and meaningful transportation app for your partner but trying to do two things now. You will have to construct, you will have four minutes now, and this is an individual exercise, right? Not in pairs, but individually. You will have to do two things. You will have to write two things. You have to write the inventory possible needs uh, and define a problem statement. So the, the needs that you just collected now, write down in this form. Uh, the partner is trying to do something because of something. So try to describe your partner he or she already introduced you, maybe you get also some of the description from uh, the introduction, from your interaction. So whatever your description is, put it here, then put something that is trying, he or she is trying to do something. So the problem that you get also from the interview because of whatever you found out about the deep needs, okay? So this is one thing that I want you to write about the needs. And the second one is about the problem. So something needs, uh, someone needs a way to do something in a way that makes them feel somehow. Again, the description of a person, right, for whom you are uh, building a solution, needs a way to resolve a problem, right, about which you are talking, in a way that makes them feel how, right? So when we were talking about now security is that, uh, Okay, I'm not going to, to, to do it for you, but you, you will have now four minutes to do it for yourself. Is it clear or is it uh, some confusion? No? Anyone needs a bit more explanation of what I mean here? Or is it clear? No? Okay, so the XXX, you have to use whatever data you collected now from the interviews and try to put down the needs and the problems. Uh, at least one, but probably you will have more than one. And the time starts now.
If you have any questions or problems, also raise a hand and I will be happy to come and help. Do I have to really watch uh, what it's saying? Mm -hmm. Okay. I, I hope we'll wish to be in time, but uh, okay, one minute left. So try to think about the uh, if you are done and you don't know what else to add, then try to think about uh, yourself. Try to put also yourself your needs and your problem in order to have a wider range of uh, problems, right? If you still have uh, something from your partner, then concentrate on that. But if you are completely done with it already, then put yourself also there. I think we have about 40 seconds left for that. Half a minute. Okay, and we are done with this one. So as, uh, as, as you remember probably, I told you that it's very important uh, when you are doing ideation uh, to have this uh, two different, uh, to have these two different states when we focus sometimes and sometimes we flare, right? Sometimes we get the data and ideate and brainstorm and uh, push out as much as we can. Sometimes we have to focus. So what is very important here is to actually uh, separate these two, these two processes, right? So when you focus, you don't jump and say, okay, actually, let's add this one thing or let's experiment a bit more. You don't do that. You just choose one thing and you focus on this one problem and you work on it. And uh, the same thing with, uh, with, with, uh, with the brainstorming. When you're brainstorming, you don't judge. Right, again, so you just put everything out. 
So this is this is very important. We are right now at define. We will be doing um, now ideation. But uh, first of all, let's take a look at what you have there. And um, what I wanted to uh, to give you is uh, two examples of the ideation and how these insights and how the needs and problems, when stated correctly, uh, could be extremely powerful. So one of the examples I wanted to give you is from the uh, public health survey uh, when a bunch of the researchers got uh, $15 million for the uh, research about the health of uh, teenagers. Uh, and when they were when they were asked to put down the description of the needs and the, the personas who they were helping, this is what they came up with, right? So the users were teenagers. The need is that they, they, they needed to eat healthy food. And the insight is that the, uh, into this problem is that certain nutrients are necessary for physical and cognitive health and development. Okay. And they were conducting interviews. Anything stands out here? Does anyone see any problem? Be critical. Don't get this, uh, yeah. this scary language uh, problem. Well, first of all, it doesn't sound like this is what uh, a teenager will, at least for me, it will, will not uh, something the teenager will tell you during an interview, that they need a healthy food because certain nutrients are necessary for physical and cognitive uh, health and development, isn't it? I don't know. I, uh, I don't know about you, but I, I haven't seen that many uh, teenagers that are like that. Anything else? I have a lot of problems, actually, with this summary. No? Otherwise, it's fine? Come again? The teenagers, right, of course. So the teenager, what is that? It's like uh, basically also like staying at grown-ups, right? It's, it doesn't, it's not helpful at all. Anything else? Well, it's, yeah. Exactly, right? So it's actually, uh, it's being imposing the problem on them instead of identi uh, identifying the problem that they have. It also not telling you anything about how they feel, right? So there are no emotions here. And as I just mentioned to you, feeling and emotions are extremely important because if you don't have them, if you are using this dictatorship approach, that unless you're in a military camp, it's more probably you are going to fail because someone else will build something with a bit more empathy and people will be just using with that. How many of you are friends of people who you don't like, but you have to be friends with them because it's useful for your career or the future future financial status or anything like that? No, really, right? It's like you can sometimes uh, have the colleagues like this, but not friends. And think about your solutions in a pretty much similar way. There are a lot of people around you and you choose friends because they are useful for your emotional state, right? Your, the apps, the solutions that we are choosing are also, they're functional, but at the same time, they are also providing you with a certain emotional, uh, with certain emotional uh, environment. So actually, uh, I try to build, uh, I try to, to, to conduct this experiment and the, the, I just asked my students about it. And what I did figure out is that the user, for example, the a sophomore of NUS college, uh, feels that they should be socially uh, accepted while eating still healthy food. And the insights here, for me at least, was that actually the social uh, acceptance and social health is more important than their physical health. Okay. And that's why very often they are fine with eating junk food, uh, not just because it's on a, on a rush, but because it's uh, uh, because it's socially more uh, accepted, actually. And it's not just me. Actually, afterwards, I looked that uh, around. I, I wanted to study it a bit more, and then I figured out that there is a perfect example from that in a recent uh, business. Uh, world and it's uh, presented by this company uh, called Liquid Death. Anyone familiar with the Liquid Death? No. Okay. So uh, it's uh, no surprise. It's on sale only in uh, U.S. now. But this is guess what the product what this product is. It's water, right? So this is water. And if you think that you can't build a business on selling water in 21st century, you are wrong. These guys 
uh, skyrocketing. They just raised $200 million uh, for the water plant. And they are not even bottling this water in US, they're buying it in Austria and then just shipping all the water over the ocean. And uh, again, the, the, uh, the evaluation is just beyond any kind of any constraints and they're not building an AI app, right? All they figured out, all the insight was that, who do you think are the customers of this company? Anyone just guess? Come again? Youth, why? Yeah, so it, it looks like something else, right? It looks, uh, why do you think the, the youth would buy uh, a beer? Uh, or because they want to buy beer? I mean, if they would buy beer, they would just uh, drink beer, right? Not water. So why would they look cool, right? Again, it's about feeling. It's about the social acceptance. The drink is part of your identity. And the interesting thing is that, well, it is true that a, a huge uh, part of their customers, the people who they're helping, are the teenagers, indeed, and the uh, school kids. And their parents are just so happy, you can't imagine it. Because finally, they can, they can give them water to drink. And they don't care whether it has this uh, skull on it or not. Because parents, indeed, care about their health. But the kids care about the, just drinking something because they just played football or something, uh, and not and be still socially acceptable. Now, another cohort of their users are construction builders. So these guys actually really have to look cool because they're working in like in a heat with a, uh, with a, with the hammers and everything. And very often they're drinking beer or some energetic drinks, but they actually they're still dehydrated. So they really need water. But water is also this plastic bottle is also not cool. So even for people in their 40s and 50s who go to the gym all the time, they also need the social acceptance, right? So it's not really about the just figuring out, okay, people have to drink and then we give them some drinks. No, it's about the, this uh, a lot of the things that are underneath. So if you would ask people why, why are you actually not drinking water? It's very good for your health. They will tell you, you can, you can dig up further. And this is why it's very important for you to conduct these interviews and come back and back and back and empathize with your users, okay? So now uh, we are coming to the brainstorming, right? So the, to this uh, point in your ideation process where you have to, uh, without restriction, just think about the, all the ideas and use whatever the data that you have now collected, all the, the insights, the descriptions of your uh, users, of the persona, uh, all the different nitties gritties that you've collected, and try to think about the five or seven uh, ideas. Think in all different directions. Don't think that the first one should be uh, the best one. No, the, the whole point is just to put everything out. The, the crazier, the better. Because the very important thing here is that, uh, which, which has been uh, said by uh, actually three Nobel laureates. I was looking for a quote for you and I found three similar quotes. When they were asked about the ideas, they would say, well, the only way to get the good ideas is to have a lot of ideas, right? So if you're restricting yourself to one, two things to choose from, the chance that your idea will be good and insightful is much smaller than if you will let yourself to write 10 things. If you write the crazy ones, then you push the boundaries and probably those in the middle will be really impactful. So right now, let's try to spend, I'll give you four minutes. Again, it's an individual exercise. Try to, uh, try to think about how now to incorporate everything that you have in something useful, okay? It could be speculative, it should be speculative because you have a very restricted amount of data now. But try to think right, left, and center. And again, very important, no judgment and no revisions. Don't go back and say, oh, well, actually I have to change it. Maybe I can uh, make it sexier, et cetera. No, just put down the ideas and that would be it at this stage. Okay, uh, we have four minutes, time is now. If you need to draw, draw. If you need to write, write. Uh, so again, no restrictions here.
remember that you are building an app for your partner, but of course you also have yourself as a, as another uh, data point, right? As another individual who has also insight. So if you can incorporate both, it's fine. If there is a conflict, then choose your partner as a person for whom you are building, okay? okay we're one minute in, so three more minutes. Okay, one minute left. Okay, and we are done. Uh, cool, so now you have this list of the few ideas. So let's, uh, let's take a look so where we are. So we are now uh, at ID8, and the next step is about prototyping. Now, one thing that I have to tell you is that although I'm pushing you today through this funnel, it doesn't have to go in one direction, one after another step. Now, this is a guideline, but of course, as you can probably now see, it actually will be helpful maybe to have another interview, right? Maybe actually to go back and ask a, a bunch of questions because now you have a few ideas and check these ideas, maybe get a bit more data. Now you know also better that maybe you are actually missing some of the people and it's very useful often to talk to the extreme users. Someone who, for example, never used the transportation app and ask them why, why you never used it? Well, I don't like uh, mobile apps, why? Uh, or I don't, I never take a, a bus, for example, etc. People who really, really like your app, you want to ask them what, 
ma really makes them the, your fans. At the same time, ask the people who never use it, what are you missing? So you don't have to go in just one direction. You can do the loops here and come back again and again and again. But let's still stick to the, uh, the system for now and prototype. And for prototyping, there are just two things that I want you to remember, why it's important. The first thing is you have to fail as early as possible. Right? So you now have a lot of uh, ideas uh, and you want to, uh, you want to uh, fail bad ideas as soon as possible. And the second one is, is you, wa you want to test as often as possible. Because as you can imagine that no apps, no solutions uh, to problems are built now and then forever they leave there without any change, right? So you can imagine that every time the world will change just a little bit and you need a new feature, you need a new language, you need a new platform, et cetera, et cetera. So you're in this process forever. I mean, as long as your solution really lives, it's up to you, but it's a never ending story. <laughs> so why you want to fail as soon as possible? It's very easy because as you can imagine the cost. So this is the cost of failure of failure of your hypothesis is going exponentially with time, right? So here it's already too late because uh, you can imagine that uh, you, if you are building an app, if someone, let's say if I'll give you a half a million or a million or five million to build a perfect transportation app and you will hire the engineers and you will put an effort to publish it on Apple uh, market or the, or the, or the Google Play uh, and then it will take you a year or two, and then I'll tell you that I don't like the colors, you're done, right? So you, you worked on it for two years, and now you're done. And this is very often where it happens. So if you look at it, uh, some corporations, when their mobile uh, was just growing, they needed a mobile app, and this is how they did it. They put a lot of effort in building the perfect uh, app for the New York Times, for example, Washington Post, or anything like that. And then you open it, and you can't read it. Right? So the, the team of 100 different engineers worked on it and they burned through $50 million and it's absolutely unusable. So what you want to have is you want to draw something on a napkin just like you did and go at least to 10 readers and say, actually, would you, would you like it? Is it readable? And maybe draw it uh, or not on a paper and the next time and draw it on, a, on your planchette and then ask them that. And then try one hypothesis, the next one, and the next one. So you won't try this all your different uh, hypotheses and make them, if they're supposed to fail, then fail them as soon as possible. Don't drag them with you. And then you want to do it as often as possible, right? Again, because I mentioned to you that these ideation loops are there with you forever. So in 24 hours of your hackathon, you don't have to do it just once. You probably have to revisit your idea and again and again. And every time you have hypotheses for the solution, you have to test it and test it quickly so that if, it, if it's the lame one, you don't want to wait until the presentation when people will tell you, well, that actually looks strange because of small thing that you, you could have corrected in the very beginning, okay? So this is the, the two things, the only two things that I want you to remember about prototyping. So what I'll ask you now to do is I'll give you three minutes to choose one of the ideas. You probably already have some kind of sense of how this idea could look like. And I'll ask you to draw a very simple, of course, because you only have three minutes, but I'll, I'll ask you to draw a very simple prototype. Choose one thing in this prototype. You will not be able to outline the whole perfect transportation app, but choose one insight and just draw it out, okay? Just design this one prototype for this perfect idea, uh, transportation map because the next step will be testing, right? We will be getting, we're, we're going to get back to your partners and actually getting more data from them. Of whether this one implementation, this one idea of those five or seven or whatever the number is, whether you actually captured it right, whether it's useful, whether your hypothesis is correct. So we'll try to test it within after this three minutes, so really quickly. And if it was going to fail, then there will be no cost for you, right? You just spent three minutes of your life. Let's try to do that. So three minutes, choose one idea, uh, draw it out, 
the best way is to actually draw it because a mobile app is not going to be written as a short story. Uh, but if you feel uncomfortable, then you can do a mix of it. So you can put some uh, explanations. And the time is now, so we have three minutes. It's up to you how you do it, right? So think about, again, the baby, the door, the house. Use the concepts that you think will convey your idea to your partner, right? So if you, if you need uh, some buttons and the screens and the pictures, do that. If you just want to have a bunch of arrows which will tell you about the movement through the app and you think is going to convey the idea, is also fine. This is the time for testing prototyping, etc. So do that, no fear. As I mentioned to you, creative confidence is the most important thing. So let's build it together. So try to find what works for you in order to uh, convene your ideas. We have 45 seconds left. Okay, so uh, the time is up. So now it's the time to do some testing on the ideas that you have. And so the, the idea now you will have uh, three minutes to quickly show the explain what, what, what you've built, what, what's your prototype, what's your hypothesis, what's your idea. And, but most importantly, get some feedback, right? So what you don't want to be is you don't want to be this guy. You don't want to be the old car salesman and uh, start saying, I've heard you, and this is what you needed, and all these kind of things. No, it's actually all about the no judgment and getting the data. You're not pushing your idea, right? You're not trying to convince a person that this is exactly the perfect solution that they need. That's not a good way to go. Now try to check and test your hypothesis. Did you understand correctly? Are there any other insights that actually are more important? Very often after this interview, you will see that some of the hypotheses actually have to be changed because uh, you misunderstood the person or there was something else that you didn't capture during the interview and you have to get it and then it may help you to build a better things, right? This is why it's so important to, uh, to, to often test the ideas in iterate and iterate. So don't push, uh, just get some feedback. Uh, most importantly, try to listen. Okay, explain first, take about maybe a minute, uh, half a minute to explain, but then spend most of the time to get the feedback. Is it good? Is it not good? Why? 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 Again. So why is a very important 
uh, question here. So three minutes one way, and then I'll tell you when you switch, and then three minutes uh, in a different way. Uh, and the time starts now. Okay, I'm sorry, I don't have anything to show you. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's cool. It's very, I like this idea. So you basically have now kind of uh, cost per minute transportation, right? Okay, I like it. So you can optimize by time, but you can also optimize by cost. One idea that immediately just popped to my mind now is it would be nice to have a feature when you optimize by the calories burned. When you want to walk a bit, so you can say, for example, if you don't take a bus here, but you just walk for five minutes, you don't have a big head. Yeah, yeah, for example, yeah, yeah. I mean, it really depends on time, I think. Time component here is important. And maybe we can look into the patterns of use, right? So, for example, in the morning when people go to job, time, of course, is more important, right? In the evening when I'm going back home, the calories are good because whether it will take me half an hour or 40 minutes, it doesn't matter that much. But to burn a bit of calories might be nice. Also, it's not hot already. So the patterns might be useful, right? Uh, and we actually can look for timing there, or for patterns, uh, right? So in the beginning, we can say that we don't know what to optimize, but then once the user, once I, for example, use the app, uh, the data analyst can suggest me that we notice that in the morning you optimize for time, in the evening you optimize for uh, calories, would you like to keep it as your preferences? And I'll say yes. And that would be my setup. Sometimes. 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 When I trust an app, it's it's a very it's a very tricky question because uh, there are it's, there might be some privacy concerns. So I definitely want to have a, a kind of an option to turn it off uh, to control the data flow. But uh, sometimes I find I I, I I find it fine. Let me just. Uh, Okay, uh, three minutes up. So let's switch the roles and now get the get the uh, the feedback from the another person. If you want, I can I can continue giving you a bit more feedback on that. We can we can brainstorm a bit more. I actually like this. I would build probably something similar for you. But one of the things is that uh, I will put the security settings there, which will be monitoring news. We'll be monitoring uh, how people feel when they take it. So that when users can say that uh, I don't just give it like a five stars or four stars or three stars for overall quality, but actually how safe I feel. So like a safe rating will be a separate thing. Uh, self-reported, which which we which we can have. Uh, yeah, yeah. When when you, for example, can say that okay, I took the the drive on a bike from one point to another, but the bike was uh, didn't really have one of the brakes, and also the car this road is a bit dangerous because it doesn't have the bike lane. So overall, I give the service four points, but for safety three points, something like that. You know, so you have like additional. Would it be useful? Mm. 
It's quite a funny situation if you really from India. Please feel like a very bad driver, very bad. Yeah. It's a good question, yes. Uh, otherwise, it will be biased, right? I don't have a very good answer to you. I have to, I have to study users a bit more. How we can incentivize people to give more rating, I don't know, but uh, there's something to look into. Definitely. It's a very good question, very important one. Otherwise, we'll have just uh, security freaks who are giving everything one star because they're just paranoid. We don't have to have this. And we also don't have like a huge guys uh, weigh 100 kilos and do Muay Thai professionally, so they feel safe everywhere. So we don't want to have these extremes. But I, do, I don't have a very good uh, solution to it. Um, on the same note, if you um, describe with drivers, maybe like if you're any like any session or do you have any preference with the driver, for example, gender or who would like the team? I personally don't care so much about it. Uh, but maybe, yeah. I mean, when it's there, uh, it doesn't distract me much. But personally, it's not something that I much. Is it something that you that is important for you? Definitely, but if you when security is important, we try to take care of our users mm. safety and look at yeah. But some girls, for instance, they, um, I think they can get like four kilos and yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, they want to be yeah. driver. Yeah. The female, the female drivers is, is is a good suggestion. You want to keep it like uh, not really biased in the sense because uh, I'm worried that in some countries it might really go racist. Yeah. Uh, so how to how to be still inclusive? I I don't know, but it's an interesting it's an interesting problem to to tackle also. Okay, so we have to wrap up. Okay, folks, uh, we are wrapping up here. I'm uh, happy to see that you are excited and there is a flow of ideas here, although we are actually almost at, it's almost half past eight. So the, the fact that you are still alive is, pleases me enormously. But this is, pretty much the, this is pretty much the end of the cycle that we have here. And uh, the last step that I would really like you to, uh, to have here is to share maybe with everyone one or two insights, if you can. I would really, I mean, I don't want to push you, but if you can, if you can share with, with us uh, one, of the, one of the insights or interesting things. And what you can do now is look at the solution that you did draw when the very beginning of this workshop, when I asked you to draw a perfect app for transportation and look of what you prototype now. Is there anything that you learned during this, uh, kind of a, um, a line of uh, a few inter minutes uh, activities that you didn't think of before? And uh, was there something that you really like that has been built for you? So does anyone want to share anything? Anything nice, anything interesting, insightful? Anything that is different from the, from the initial app that you have built? No, it was pretty much the same. All good, the same functionality, the same feeling, the same colors, the same buttons. No surprising feedback. Okay, for example, can you give one of the examples of uh, that that is additional to what you thought about in the beginning? Um, so like in general, it's also in like the, like the way you think about the solution. Right? Mm -hmm. Specifically, with the thing is like uh, when you're designing a user interface, right? You want it to be like reachable for like every like, finger, right? Okay. Yeah. So er ergonomics, right, is very important. That's true. Where the fingers are. Actually, if you think about it, the um, a lot of the apps are missing that because they don't think where your th thumb is. And the most popular buttons probably should be whenever you can reach with your finger, right? So these kind of things are very important. Thank you. This is it's a very good. Example. So like I was just saying, like um, I, when I was explaining my problem to my partner, yeah. I was saying like um, there's no car park here, so it's really annoying. Okay. But he went like one step ahead and have a top, top, top parking lot button with it. Oh, okay. It, do you find it useful? Yeah, it's definitely very useful. No, this is this is a great thing, right? So this is exactly what I'm thinking. Is, uh, what I was telling you is that you can from the interviews don't take exactly what the person is telling, but try to understand what's beneath it. And then since right now you would 
just talking to one person. So you can imagine that once you talk to different people, you will start seeing patterns that will emerge, that actually there are certain things that people are talking about in different ways, but it's the same problem underneath. Both construction workers and school kids actually would like to drink water, but they don't feel cool. This is a completely different group of people, right? If you think about it, it will be strange to build a solution for construction workers and the school kids, but this is what happens sometimes in the world. Anything else? Any, 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 anything anyone wants to share? Any nice solutions or apps? Yeah, sure. Okay. Oh, that's nice. So, like uh, traffic, uh, basically, the, when we have the red highlights for the for the traffic, is it? Yeah. Oh, that's a good feature, and also didn't think about it at the very beginning, right? When you're thinking about it. Okay. Cool. Thank you very much for sharing. Anything else? Well, you can see that we spent just, uh, I don't know, all in all, it was many needs uh, talking. So uh, on your side, it was probably, what, about 20 minutes of ideation compressed. And already you have something rolling out, right? So you already pushed beyond the first ideas that you have for transportation app. And also, I, I did impose this problem on you. So probably that's not your favorite idea. So maybe now you can take this framework of empathy, uh, collecting the data, the interviews, right? Focusing on the problem, then brainstorming and really flaring, uh, defining the problem and then testing it, failing the weak uh, hypothesis and then finding something useful and apply it to your, to your thing, to the problem that you really care about, that you're strong about. Now remember that there is one more thing here that we didn't discuss and we didn't implement here is that uh, you were working on your own, right? You were building this thing on your own for just one person. And one person, of course, should be many users that you will have. But also you are not alone when you are building something. You have a team. So what is very important here is to remember your strengths and weaknesses. If you still feel not very comfortable with conducting these interviews, if it's difficult for you and you would rather restrict yourself to building a solution, Remember it, actually use it. It's not for everyone indeed, just like sales is not for everyone, marketing is not what's for everyone. Maybe you really like drawing out these ideas. Maybe you really like drawing out these user interfaces based on all the interviews are conducted. Remember that, and now when you will be building a team, it's very useful because you will know that, okay, this person, we will still be doing everything together and ideation is important in all the steps, but one person really likes building and coding. Another one really talking to people. Third one is really combining the ideas and working with these concepts. So this is very important. You will be going through this exercise again and again during the hackathon and then later in life. But remembering what's your strengths and weaknesses is very useful. Well, because if you are just in the perfect spot which makes you happy, then you are happy and you, people are even for some reason are paying you money for that. That's the better world for everyone, isn't it? Well. Thank you very much. I will be wrapping up here. I hope it was useful, at least to some extent. I really appreciate that you are still not sleeping. And uh, good luck with, uh, with the rest of the technical workshops. And I hope you will have fun at uh, the hackathon, because that's basically where we are all here, right? Having fun and learning something useful. Thank you.